Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome to pick number 16 of my favorite 30 drummers of all time. We've been counting down each and every day here this month in November 2024. 30 days in a month, our 30 favorite drummers across all genres, right? Rock, metal, prog, jazz, fusion, country, big band, whatever you want, right? Whatever you want, whatever whoever your favorites are, that's who we're all picking together each and every day here. So today we got another great American drummer who's sadly no longer with us. He left us, geez, about 30 years ago. Uh, he's another one of those guys that got his start out as he's just a studio cat, right? Just playing on all sorts of records. Again, another one of those guys that if you look at his discography of everything that he's appeared on, all the artists that he's worked with, you'd be pretty mind blowing knowing, wow, he played on that album. He played on that album and that song, right? Just, he's one of those guys, one of those guys. So let me, uh, let me upload his image and bring him to the stage here. So you know exactly who I'm talking about. Come on, Prezi. There we go. Yes. So today's pick for number 16 is none other than the late, great Jeff Percaro, of course, most notably known for being the uh, drummer, one of the few Percaros who uh, were in, of course, Toto, right? Founding member of Toto, played with Toto for many, many years up until his uh, death in the early 90s. And uh, another one of those guys, like I said, has played with everybody, played with everybody over the years and uh, picking like favorite albums and a song was really difficult for Jeff because he's just so steady all the time. This is one of those guys where you talk about an in the pocket all the damn time drummer. That's Jeff Pacaro right there. I mean, there's a reason why he was so sought out by so many artists and bands to contribute drums to their albums and songs. That's because he was that guy. He's like the steady Eddie. He's the guy you want because he can handle any style too, right? Rock, pop, country, hard rock, fusion, jazz rock, he could do it all, right? That, that was Jeff Pacaro, just so, so good. So uh, let's talk about some of the albums here that uh, I'm going to kind of gravitate towards. I mean, like I said, this was pretty difficult because um, he, he's appeared everywhere. The first pick I'm going to go on, I didn't get to time. I didn't get to pick out the, uh, pull out my CD, but I'm going to go with the first Larry Carlton solo record, just called Larry Carlton. Of course, Pacaro plays on that as well. Um, I mean, it's a great album to begin with. It's, it's one of the great kind of like LA style, fusion albums of the mid 70s and uh, at the backbeat of everything on there you know right alongside larry and his sweet gibson 335 guitar is jeff Percaro. and throughout that entire album whether it's the more upbeat stuff or the more laid back kind of groovy stuff there's jeff doing his thing so good so, so good. Um, I had to pick this one. I was like, you know, I, I had like a whole handful of ones that I was considering. I'm like, God, I got to go with the Carlton one. And again, so that is, you know, pre the Toto days for sure. Um, next up, I'm going to go with uh, Steely Dan, Katie Lied. That's right. He's on here. Right? Uh, again, great stuff on this album. What do you call Steely Dan? A pop band, jazz rock, you know, all those things, funk, everything like that. And of course, you know, who's at the backbone? Jeff Beccaro, Black Fridays, Bad Sneakers, so good. Uh, Daddy Don't Live in That New York City No More, Dr. Wu, you know, that steady, steady symbol work going behind that, just so good. Uh, Your Gold Teeth 2, Chain Lightning, you know, throwback to Little Ones, Any World. I mean, just top to bottom, so good. Maybe not the uh, most well-known of the Steely Dan albums, but no less remarkable. And again, the, the funky rhythm section. Jeff Picaro is behind all of it on here. So good. So good. And uh, my last pick for my three favorite albums. Uh, again, this is not always my favorite Toto album, but I think it's my favorite Jeff Picaro performance overall on a Toto record. Uh, he's This is an example of Picaro when he's the most powerful and uh, more rock-based, right? So that is the first Toto studio album self-titled total you know uh, right off the bat you know child's anthem it's just so good again bordering it's like it's, it's rock it's it's bordering on prog right it's it's there's pop influences here so good i'll supply the love 
great rocker and man we during the, the the funky bridge man and then he thunders in so good georgie porgy showing his deft touch is really well on a more laid back track uh manuela run also really good groovy you are the flower girl goodbye again he's thunderous on that as well that's such a great driving rocker uh you got taking it back rock maker hold the line of course right it's just him and luke at their side by side but what a, what a pair those two always made for sure uh, and then, of course, Angela. Angela is great because it starts off nice and mellow, and he's just doing light cymbal stuff. And then, man, when it kicks in, so good, you know, towards the end when he's right up there, you know, with Lucas, there's riffs, just so good. Um, yeah, terrific, terrific stuff. So uh, favorite performance? I mean, I went back and forth. I'm going to cheat today because um, I'm going to give you two. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was all set to go with uh, Lido Shuffle from Boz Skaggs' Silk Degrees album. I mean, he, he's just so good on there. And again, he's not doing anything showy or anything like that. He's just so in the pocket. And Lido Shuffle is such an uplifting, fun, groovy song, you know, like a soulful rock and pop song. And man, Jeff is just doing his thing on there. It's like, like I said, he's one of those guys that like, he doesn't stand out as a flashy player. He's just, if you stop and listen to nothing but the drums, you're like, wow, that's really kind of classy and doing exactly what you'd expect from a drummer and keeping everything in line. That, that's Jeff Picaro for you right there. So Lido Shuffle my favorite Boskex Boskag song uh, was my original pick. And then I kept thinking about it and I'm like, well, you know what? It's kind of hard to not talk about Rosanna uh, from Toto four, which is, could be his signature performance. Um, and I do want to mention most of the Toto band. Again, this was pre Toto uh, appear on that Boskex album alongside uh, Jeff. Um, uh, Luke, there's not on there, but most of the other guys are on there. Uh, Anyway, I digress. Uh, yeah, Rosanna is great. Again, it's just so groovy and in the pocket, you know, for the first half of the song, um, well, the first three quarters of the song. And then the final bit, you know, when we got uh, David Pace's piano comes in and then Luker starts ripping on that solo. Uh, Jeff is just doing some wild thunderous stuff underneath. It's just so good. Go go and re-listen to Rosanna, right? And, you know, the like I said, the begin, the groovy part, the first half of the song, first three quarters of the song, again, just that in-the-pocket thing that he does. But then, man, during the finale, he turns it up a notch. Really, really good. So, yeah, Rosanna and Lido Shuffle. I know I cheated a little bit today. Uh, but as far as my three favorite picks, we're going to go with uh, Larry Carlton, self-titled debut, Toto Toto, and Steely Dan Katie Live. Of my picks for today for mr jeff Percaro, let us know what you think of this much missed drummer down in the comments below and like i said it's always interesting to do this so i would urge any of you for maybe some of these drummers that you know that i'm mentioning that you've kind of heard of uh but you don't know all that much about go on go online most of them have a web page or go to the wikipedia site and go look at their discography you will be surprised at how many albums this guy played on just so many, so, so many across all spectrums of music. So uh, that's always the fun thing. Look, it's like, wow, I didn't know he was on that album. Holy cow, how cool is that, right? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, so that's my pick for today. Let us know what you think of Jeff Beccaro down in the comments below, as well as your pick for today. Pick number 16, and we'll see you tomorrow for number 15 as we hit the halfway point in the month. Uh, you know, I see I see the comments and things like that. You know, it's like, God, he's picking so many obscure drummers. When is he going to pick drummers that I know? Guys. It's 30 days in this month, right? You're going to get a lot of the, the big well-known ones, of course. But this whole process of doing this is picking out our favorites, yours and mine. Mine don't, mine don't have to match yours. And, uh, you know, if you don't know any of these drummers that I'm mentioning, go listen to their some of their stuff. I think you would find them really, really exciting players. So, uh, you know, that's the whole thing. I'm, I'm not just here to to name all the ones that you guys like. It's like I have my own. Right. And I think hopefully I can turn you on to some of these drummers and the music and bands they played with as uh, you know, that's what we do on this channel. That's what it's all about. So, uh, you know, be a little adventurous, go out and explore some of these drummers. So also want to mention. So I saw lots of comments yesterday after I talked about what the uh, the, the topic is going to be for December. And it's like 10, 15 people were like, well, Pete, aren't you doing the top 31 albums of the year countdown like you did last year and the year before? And the answer is no. Uh, I'm not doing it on a month-long daily show. 
I don't know how many of you remember, but specifically last year when I did my top 31 albums of the year countdown, starting on December 1st, going all the way up to New Year's Eve, uh, it was probably the most poorly attended daily show, you know, monthly topic show that I've ever done on this channel. And it wasn't great the year before either. And I basically said to myself, you know what, I don't think I'm going to do it because, you know, it's good just it's the same thing with doing the, the new album reviews every week. It's the least watched show on the channel because the majority of people who come to this channel don't listen to new music. That's just the, that's the way it is. So for those of you who are disappointed and I'm not doing it on a daily basis, don't, don't fret because I am going to go back to the way I used to do it, which I'm going to do one episode very late in the year, probably right around Christmas time. I'm going to do my favorite uh, 50 albums of 2024. You're going to get it all in one episode. So you can watch the whole thing straight through um, and, Quite frankly, that's it used to work out better that way. I thought it would be kind of fun to do a countdown, you know, like the 31 days of Christmas type of thing. And each day do a, you know, reveal another one of my favorite albums of the year, which is kind of like what Brave Words and Bloody Knuckles does on their website. And I always kind of like that, but it hasn't translated to this to, to our viewers here for some reason. Because um, like I said, I don't think uh, folks, the majority of the folks who watch this channel, go out and buy and listen to new albums. And so they're not really interested in seeing what my picks are. For those of you who are very interested, you're still going to get them. You're going to get them on one episode as opposed to 31 different episodes, each one revealed each day. It's just a matter of people just don't watch it, dudes. That's uh, what it's all about. So um, dudes, I mean, fellow guys, folks, whatever. Um, so yeah, so if you are disappointed, I'm sorry. You can still put your list together. You can still post it on my video. That'll happen right around Christmas time. But no, we're going to go ahead with the uh, daily show that I mentioned. We're going to just gonna be storytelling time. Going to pick 31 of albums that are near and dear to us. And we're going to all talk about stories of uh, that first time you heard that album. What was the impact? Where were you? Who were you with? When did you hear it? And do you feel still still feel the same way about it all these years later, right? So it could be albums that came out last year. It could be albums that came out 50, 60 years ago, right? Whatever. It doesn't really matter. So just pick out 31 that are pretty special to you that you have a story to tell, right? That's the whole thing. It's got to be albums that have a story to tell, that you can remember where you were the first time you heard it, who you were with, all that sort of stuff. That's what we're doing. So uh, I'm, I'm still working on my list because, again, they have to have a story tied behind it. So this will be fun. It'll be a little bit different, but it'll be fun. And uh, like I said, the top... 50 of 2024 will happen in one episode somewhere around Christmas time. Uh, so anyway, that's the deal. So uh, stay tuned. Um, as I mentioned, Martin Popoff and I are taking a few weeks off. Martin's got some book deadlines going on. It's end of the year push for me and everything like that. And quite frankly, we need a little bit of a break. Martin and I have delivered Friday shows pretty much every single week for like four years. We need a little bit of a break. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so Martin and I will probably reconvene, <clears throat> certainly at Sea Tranquility Fall Fest. We're going to do a, a, a segment at, at the festival as, as we did last time, uh, but probably we'll reconvene either right around the holidays again or in the first of the year, you know, right right after the new year. So, uh, so yeah, uh, we're going to take a little uh, kind of refresher, right? Because you need it every now. Got to recharge the batteries. But fear not, I will have Friday programming, Friday morning programming each and every week going forward. Uh, Rick Labonte and I are going to kind of pick up the slack. So we've got a new episode of Live Album Love coming at you in just a little bit. So stay tuned for that. We're going to be talking about the many great live albums from The Who, and we'll probably pump out a little more of those Live Album Love episodes uh, over the remaining uh, month and a half of uh, 2024, just to kind of fill in for you know the little break that Martin and I are taking. So, uh, yeah, so that's happening. Just a little bit. Stay tuned. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as a post. And please hit the like button before you leave. Also, we got the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations, our merch page, our Cameo page, and the Sea Tranquility membership options all down below. And we'll see you soon here with more stuff. Professor's Picks coming up today. We've got the UK Connection tomorrow and ranking the albums of Steve Hillage alongside Anthony Ferraro coming up on Sunday. Till then, I am Pete Pardo. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.